Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. Today I wanted to show you how to run OpenRGB on Linux. The version I'm going to show you today is the app image release, which is available on GitLab. There are other ways to install OpenRGB on Linux, including building it from source, building a Debian package, or using one of the many packages provided by third parties for other distributions, such as Arch, Manjaro, Gentoo, Fedora, Ubuntu, and Debian. Um, but we're not going to use those today. We're going to use the app image because it's basically a run anywhere single binary package that you can just download and run, similar to a portable app on Windows. So what we're going to do is, starting at the GitLab homepage for OpenRGB, we're going to go over to the Releases tab. And under release 0 0.3, basically the same place we went for Windows, uh, we'll scroll down to Linux binaries, app image, and we're going to download this. So it, right now, only 64-bit is available. Uh, I've recently added support for 32-bit, but that did not make it in for 0 0.3. So we'll download this. Uh, it takes you to a Google Drive link, um, no preview available, so just click download. And then... Once that loads, once that loads, we'll click save file. Okay. Now that's downloaded, we're going to go to our downloads folder. So downloads, let me zoom in on that. So here we have, um, the app image file that we've downloaded. This is OpenRGB 0.3 Linux. Uh, you can't run it by default because if you download it, it's not marked as executable. So we're gonna go to properties and permissions, and we're gonna check the allow executing file as program. Now this option uh, might be in a different place depending on which file manager and which desktop environment you're using. Uh, I'm using GNOME on Debian. You can also use chmod plus x on the command line, which does the same thing. So we're going to x out of that. And now when we right click it, we have the option to run. So we'll click run. And you notice, OK, so it came up and it's detected one device, Corsair Lighting Node Pro. Um, I actually wasn't expecting it to detect this, but I've been, I tried to clear everything out for a blank slate and it appears like it didn't quite do that for you. So chances are at this point it's not going to detect anything. It's just going to be a blank screen. And the reason is is that we haven't set up the UDEV rules yet. Um, it looks like they didn't clear out. I was trying to delete them on my computer so I could show you from a blank slate, but that didn't work. So we'll just, I'll just go through the setup process of that. So normally if you're running this you'll just have a blank screen. And that's because you don't have permission to access your devices as your normal user account. So what we're going to do is we're going to download the UDEV rules file. So we can just scroll down here um, through the list of files until we find 60-openrgb.rules. Let's click that. And then over here on the right we have this button to download it so we'll click that and then it's going to download 60-openrgb.rules and we'll do okay now the next part we're going to need the terminal so let's get a terminal open we'll zoom in on that now what we're going to do here is cd downloads and so in downloads we have our 60 openrgb.rules file we're going to copy it um, and this is going to need admin permission so we're going to do sudo cp 60-openrgb.rules and we're going to paste it into slash etc slash udev slash rules.d this is a system directory where all the UDEV rules files are kept. We're gonna, we'll have to type our password because we're using sudo. And then 
now it's copied in. We can verify that it's copied by doing ls slash etc udev slash rules dot b and we get it says 60 open rgb dot rules. So it has been copied. Now we've pasted the file in, but we also have to reload the udev rules. You can do this by simply rebooting your computer. You can also use the udev administration tool. So sudo udev admin adm space uh, control dash dash reload dash rules. This is going to tell the udev administration tool to reload the rules file. And now we have to trigger this update. So sudo udev admin adm trigger. Now the rules should be reloaded. Now the next thing is this computer has uh, a graphics card with RGB, RGB RAM, and a motherboard with RGB. And so these devices use a thing called SMBus, also called I squared C, uh, to communicate with them. And on Linux, there's a driver called I squared C dash dev or I two C dash dev that allows programs to talk on the I squared C interface. So let's make sure that that driver is loaded. So sudo mod probe i2c dash dev. Now that's loaded. We also need to load the driver for the I squared C interface of our chipset. So i2c dash piix4. This is for AMD chips, which is what I'm using. If you had an Intel motherboard, you would do i2c dash i801. This is the driver for Intel boards. So since I'm doing an AMD board, PIIX4, we'll do that. Now we can confirm that that's loaded. sudo i2c detect dash L. If you don't have this tool installed, you'll have to install it first. So let's do sudo apt install i2c dash tools. I already have it installed, but if you didn't, you would have to install that first. Now, sudo i2c detect dash l. That's basically going to list all the i2c or i squared c adapters on the computer. Um, so we're going to look here. We've got NVKM. These are uh, i squared c interfaces on the graphics card, the NVIDIA um, driver. And then we've got this PIIX4, that's a, from the AMD chipset. And what you should have is 0B00 and 0B, uh, 0B20. If you don't have this 0B20, it means you're using an older kernel version. And I have a patch available that adds support for this to older kernels. Or you can update to a newer kernel because I got my patch upstreamed into the um, upstream kernel version. So these are showing up, so that's good. So now we should be able to exit out of the terminal because all of our, well, one more thing. Uh, sorry for the confusion. Uh, most of my setup here is Razor Gear. And so for Razor Gear, we have to have the Open Razor kernel drivers installed. Um, Debian provides these, so sudo apt install open razor, and then it's uh, dash drivers dkms, that's the package name. If you're using a different distro, you'll have to find the open razor dkms package for your distro, or install it from source. So we're going to run this. And it's going to build uh, modules for the kernel. I'm not sure why I errored out there. I probably don't have the Linux headers installed for this kernel version. Uh, so my Razor devices won't work, but if you had uh, your kernel set up correctly, they would. Um, I'm going to try rebooting my computer after this to confirm that. So let's exit out of this. 
go back to our file manager and I will right click on this and run and now because we've opened up all of those I squared C devices it will take a little bit of time to scan them all for devices it could take 30 to 60 seconds maybe maybe even longer uh, it shouldn't be too long but this is one issue that we're working on is it takes a long time to scan on certain computers so now it's up and it's detected our I2, I2 C devices which is the motherboard and the RAM the GPU, the Lighting Node Pro, and it has not detected my Razer devices, which is understandable because that DKMS installer had an error. And that's just because my kernel headers aren't installed. Um, so what we can do is we should be able to control uh, at least the stuff that is detected. Um, so like in the Windows video, the Corsair Lighting Node needs to be resized. So I'm going to resize and I had 12 LEDs for the fans on channel 1 and 15 LEDs for the case on channel 2 and now I'm going to pick green and click apply and so what we can see is that all the razor gear on the desk has not changed um, due to that error but the case where all of my non-Razer gear is, is now green. So I can click on yellow, red, and so all of these other devices, the RAM, the motherboard, the RGB header on the motherboard, uh, the Corsair Commander Pro, all that's installed in my case, those devices are working. And the reason my Razer devices aren't showing up is because of the kernel header issue. So, uh, sorry that didn't completely work, but I hope that gives you an idea on how to use OpenRGB on Linux. And um, I might make an additional video showing the Open Razer devices working. But until then, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy using OpenRGB on Linux. Bye.